Management assertions are claims made by members of management regarding certain aspects of a business. The concept is primarily used in regard to the audit of a company's financial statements, where the auditors rely upon a variety of assertions regarding the business. These assertions are relevant to auditors performing a financial statement audit in two ways. First, the objective of a financial statement audit is to obtain sufficient appropriate audit evidence to conclude on whether the financial statements present fairly in all material respects the financial position of a company and the results of its operations and cash flows. In developing that conclusion, the auditor evaluates whether audit evidence corroborates or contradicts financial statement assertions. Second, auditors are required to consider the risk of material misstatement through understanding the entity and its environment, including the entity's internal control. Financial statement assertions provide a framework to assess the risk of material misstatement in each significant account balance or class of transactions. The accounting cycle is the process of recording and processing all financial transactions of a company from when the transaction occurs to its representation on the financial statements to closing the account. Auditors typically break down the audit process around accounting cycles to ensure a comprehensive and systematic review of an organization's financial statements. For example, during the planning stage, auditors assess the company's operations and identify the relevant accounting cycles, for example, revenue, expenditure, etc. They gather information about the company's internal controls, risk, and potential areas of misstatement. By breaking down the audit process around accounting cycles, auditors can systematically assess each aspect of an organization's financial operations and provide reasonable assurance about the accuracy of its financial reporting. SOX places significant responsibilities on management to ensure the accuracy, transparency, and integrity of a company's financial reporting process. For example, CEOs and CFOs are required to provide certifications in the company's quarterly and annual reports confirming their responsibility for financial statements and internal controls over financial reporting. These certifications affirm that the financial statements are accurate, the internal controls over financial reporting has been evaluated, and any identified weaknesses or fraud have been reported. These responsibilities aim to bolster investor confidence, prevent accounting fraud, and maintain the integrity of financial markets. Under SOX, auditors play a crucial role in enhancing the reliability and accuracy of financial reporting for public companies. Their responsibilities are designed to ensure that financial statements are free from material misstatements and that internal controls over financial reporting are effective. Auditors responsible for conducting an audit of the company's financial statements that are prepared by management. This involves examining the company's financial records, transactions, and supporting documentation to determine whether the financial statements are presented fairly and accurately in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles, GAAP. Audit objectives are the specific goals and purposes that auditors aim to achieve when conducting an audit of a company's financial statements. These objectives guide auditors in their efforts to gather sufficient and appropriate audit evidence to provide an independent and reliable assessment of the financial information. These objectives are closely tied to management assertions, which provide auditors a structured framework to gather sufficient and appropriate audit evidence. By systematically assessing these assertions, auditors create a roadmap for gathering relevant and sufficient evidence to validate the accuracy and integrity of the financial statements. This approach enhances the reliability of the audit process and the resulting opinion provided by the auditor. Assertions can be broken down into three categories. Assertions about transactions and events relate to the income statement and the activity throughout the year for the period under audit. Assertions about account balances relate to the ending balances in the accounts reflected in the company's balance sheet. Finally, presentation and disclosure assertions relate to the presentation of information within the financial statements as well as the included 
disclosures. The occurrence assertion is one of the key assertions made by management regarding the transactions and events presented in the financial statements. It asserts that the recorded transactions and events actually occurred and are relevant to the company's operations during the specified period. The auditor's objective related to the occurrence assertion is to gather sufficient and appropriate audit evidence that supports the occurrence of transactions and events reported in the financial statements. The auditor wants to ensure that all recorded transactions are real and not fabricated, which helps ensure the financial statements accuracy and reliability. Consider a company that sells electronic devices. As part of its revenue recognition process, the company records sales transactions when products are sold to customers. The occurrence assertion for revenue would involve confirming that the sales transactions have indeed taken place. The completeness assertion is a management assertion that ensures that all relevant transactions, events, and information are included in the financial statements. It asserts that there are no significant omissions and all material items that should be presented have been properly recorded. The auditor's objective in relation to the completeness assertion is to obtain sufficient and appropriate evidence that supports the idea that all important transactions and events have been accurately captured in the financial statements. This is essential to avoid the risk of underreporting which could mislead users of the financial statements. Consider an example of a retail company that offers gift cards to customers. When customers purchase these gift cards, the company receives payment upfront, but provides goods or services at a later date when the gift card is redeemed. The completeness assertion for revenue would involve ensuring that all revenue generated from the sale of gift cards is properly recognized in the financial statements. The accuracy assertion pertains to the monetary amounts and other data associated with transactions and events presented in the financial statements. It asserts that the recorded amounts are precise, properly calculated, and free from material errors. The auditor's objective regarding the accuracy assertion is to gather sufficient and appropriate audit evidence to confirm that the monetary figures calculations, and other numerical data in the financial statements are accurate and in accordance with relevant accounting standards. This ensures that the financial information is reliable and trustworthy. Consider an example of a software company that recognizes revenue from software licenses. When customers purchase software licenses, revenue is recognized based on the sales price and the number of licenses sold. The accuracy assertion for revenue would involve confirming that the revenue recorded for these transactions accurately reflects the actual sales prices and quantities of licenses sold. Classification pertains to the proper categorization and presentation of transactions and items in the financial statements. It asserts that transactions are correctly classified into appropriate accounts and categories according to accounting standards. The auditor's objective regarding the classification assertion is to gather sufficient and appropriate audit evidence that ensures transactions are accurately classified and presented in the financial statements. This helps maintain the clarity and accuracy of financial reporting, ensuring that users can understand the company's financial position and performance. As an example, Consider a company that provides both products and services to customers. The company needs to differentiate between revenue generated from product sales and revenue generated from service contracts. The classification assertion for revenue would involve ensuring that revenue from products and services is properly categorized and presented. Finally, the cutoff assertion focuses on the timing of when transactions and events are recorded in the financial statements. It asserts that transactions are recorded in the correct accounting period, ensuring that revenues and expenses are allocated to the appropriate time frame. The auditor's objective related to the cutoff assertion is to obtain sufficient and appropriate audit evidence to confirm that transactions and events are recorded in the correct accounting period.
This helps ensure that revenues and expenses are matched with the appropriate time frame and contribute to accurate financial reporting. Consider a retail company with a fiscal year end of December 31st. At the end of December, the company offers a year-end sale that extends from December 29th to January 2nd. The cutoff assertion for revenue would involve ensuring that the revenue from sales made during this period is allocated to the correct accounting period. In other words, sales that occurred on January 1st and January 2nd would not be included in the December 31st income statement. Management assertions about account balances addresses the balance sheet. The existence assertion is a management assertion that focuses on the presence of assets, liabilities, and equity items listed in the financial statements. It asserts that the reported items actually exist, both physically and in terms of ownership or obligation. The auditor's objective regarding the existence assertion is to gather sufficient and appropriate audit evidence that confirms the physical existence of assets, the validity of liabilities, and the ownership rights or obligations associated with them. This ensures that the financial statements provide an accurate presentation of the company's financial position. Consider an example where a company's balance sheet, accounts related to revenue, such as accounts receivable and deferred revenue, are recorded. The existence assertion for these revenue-related balance sheet accounts would involve confirming that the reported balances correspond to actual existing assets and liabilities. Completeness ensures that all relevant transactions, events, and information have been included in the financial statements. It asserts that there are no significant omissions and all material items that should be presented have been accurately recorded. The auditor's objective in relation to the completeness assertion is to gather audit evidence that supports the idea that all important transactions and events have been properly recorded and included in the financial statements. This is crucial to avoid the risk of underreporting, which could provide a distorted view of the financial position and performance of the company. Consider a company's balance sheet where the accounts receivable account represents outstanding amounts owed by customers for goods sold or services provided. The completeness assertion for this account involves ensuring that all outstanding customer debts have been accurately recorded in the accounts receivable balance. Valuation and allocation pertains to the accuracy of the amounts assigned to assets, liabilities, revenues, and expenses in the financial statements. It asserts that these values are fairly presented, appropriately calculated, and in line with accounting standards. The objective of the auditor related to valuation and allocation is to gather audit evidence that supports the idea that the monetary values assigned to assets, liabilities, revenues, and expenses in the financial statements are accurate, reasonable, and in accordance with the applicable accounting standards. For example, Consider a company's balance sheet where the accounts receivable account represents outstanding amounts owed by customers. The valuation and allocation assertion for this account involves ensuring that the recorded balances accurately reflect the estimated collectible amounts, the net realizable value of accounts receivable. Rights and obligations focuses on whether the company actually has the legal rights to its assets and the valid obligations for its liabilities as of the reporting date. It asserts that the company has the rightful ownership or responsibility for the items listed in the financial statements. The auditor's objective related to rights and obligations is to gather audit evidence to confirm that the company indeed possesses the legal rights to its assets and is obligated for its liabilities as reported in the financial statements. This ensures the accuracy and credibility of the financial reporting process. Consider a company's balance sheet where the accounts receivable account represents outstanding amounts owed by customers. The rights and obligation assertion for this account involves ensuring that the company has a valid right to receive the payments from its customers. 
The presentation and disclosure assertions are management assertions that deal with how transactions, events, and other information are organized, labeled, and disclosed in the financial statements. These assertions ensure that the financial statements are appropriately structured, transparent, and comply with relevant accounting standards. The auditor's objective related to the presentation and disclosure assertions is to gather sufficient and appropriate audit evidence to confirm that the financial statements are accurately organized, clearly labeled, and contain all necessary disclosures as per the relevant accounting standards. This ensures that the financial statements provide a complete and understandable picture of the company's financial position and performance. For example, the occurrence and rights and obligations assertions, the auditor would look to verify that information that's disclosed accurately reflects what has occurred and that the company has rights or obligations related to these transactions or events. The objective, for example, would be to confirm that the disclosed information is supported by valid agreements or documents and that it properly represents the company's rights and obligations. With respect to completeness, management asserts that all relevant information is included in the footnotes of the financial statements. For example, if a company has contingent liabilities, the audit objective would be to review the footnotes to confirm that all significant contingent liabilities have been disclosed, providing stakeholders with a clear understanding of potential risk. With regard to accuracy and valuation, management asserts that all information disclosed is in the correct amounts and reflects their proper values. As an example, management discloses accounting estimates such as fair value calculations, and they are asserting that they're accurately presented and explained. The auditor's objective would be to evaluate the accuracy of the disclosed accounting estimates and assess whether they are clearly explained, allowing users to understand the basis for valuation. Classification and understandability asserts that the information included in the financial statement has been appropriately classified, presented, and is clearly understandable. For example, management might assert that the financial statements properly categorize expenses into non-operating and operating categories. The auditor's objective would be to review expense categorization and assess whether the presentation allows users to distinguish between expenses related to the company's core operations and those outside of them. As you can see, there's duplication in the types of assertions across the three categories. However, each assertion type is intended for a different aspect of the financial statements, with transactions and events being related to the income statement, account balances being related to the balance sheet, and presentation and disclosure being related to the accompanying disclosures. In the end, the auditor's objective is to systematically assess these assertions in order to gather sufficient and appropriate evidence to validate the accuracy and integrity of the financial statements. While the PCAOB and ASB assertions both relate to management assertions about financial statement elements, they are associated with different types of auditing standards and have some variations in their terminologies and emphasis. Recall, the PCAOB's auditing standards are used for audits of public companies and the PCLB defines five categories of assertions which are slightly different in terms of wording compared to ASB assertions. For example, a key difference in the terminology is on the emphasis. The PCLB assertions tend to emphasize accuracy and relevance. For example, valuation and allocation highlights both accuracy and fairness in valuation, and presentation and disclosure focuses on the relevance of disclosed information, whereas the ASB assertions are more straightforward using terminology that directly indicates the purpose of each assertion. Some example of subtle wording differences. 
While the differences in wording between the two sets of assertions are subtle, the PCAOB assertions might be perceived as slightly more detailed in their description of the nature of each assertion. Overall, the difference between the PCAOB and ASB assertions are mainly in terminology, emphasis, and subtle wording. Both sets of assertions aim to address the same fundamental aspects of financial statement assertions, existence, completeness, rights and obligations, valuation and allocation, and presentation and disclosure.